Good morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Tell who the true Minnesotans are on a day like today. So, welcome to the Lord's house and to the warmth of uh, not only his house, but uh, his word and his gifts. Um, we enter a new season today, the season of Epiphany. Uh, the, the season that goes from Christmas uh, to Lent, and a time when uh, Epiphany means to reveal in all the ways that that Jesus is revealed to us as the Son of God, as, as the Savior and Messiah of the world. And uh, the first of those was at his baptism. That's the focus of the first Sunday of Epiphany. And uh, so we uh, focus on Jesus' baptism, but also uh, we celebrate uh, the gift of baptism today for Joseph and uh, God's uh, special uh, work in her life. Our opening hymn this morning, uh, the baptismal hymn, uh, before we sing it, though, we invite you to stand and, and greet those around you with the peace of the Lord. In 592, we'll sing the first three verses before the baptism and the last two verses after our baptism. Baptism now saves you. 
The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. How is your child named? Josephine, Josephine Violet Newberg. Receive the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one who has been redeemed by Jesus Christ. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. Is it your intention to serve Josephine as sponsors in the Christian faith? If so, then answer yes with the help of God. God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Hear now the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join in uh, praying for God's blessings upon Josephine as we pray together the words of our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Because Josephine cannot answer for herself, I shall ask you as parents and as sponsors, uh, together with all who are gathered here, to speak on her behalf in testimony of the forgiveness of sins and the new birth of the life of faith which God gives in baptism. Josephine Violet Newberg, do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? If so answer, yes, I do. And do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? So answer, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. If so, answer, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints? Do you believe in the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? If 
so answer, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. And as parents, I ask you, do you desire for your child to be baptized? If so, answer, yes, we do. Bring her to the front. Josephine Violet Newberg, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. White is the color of baptism. It is the color of holiness, the color of forgiveness. It is the color of the white robes that we shall wear in heaven. And so receive this white garment to show that you have been clothed with Christ's righteousness that covers all your sins. And so you shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the inheritance promised to you before the foundation of the world. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. It is his light which shines in Josephine's heart. We give you this candle as a reminder of the baptism, uh, perhaps to gather with sponsors each anniversary of this special day, uh, to burn the candle and to celebrate God's gift. And so receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. We invite you to rise for prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family, that you have granted Josephine the new birth and holy baptism, and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as she has become your child, that you would keep her in her baptismal grace that according to your good pleasure, she may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, to obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord and giver of life, look with kindness upon Justin and Samantha, the parents of Josephine, and upon all parents. Let them ever rejoice in the gift that you have given them. Enable them to be teachers and examples of righteousness for their children. Strengthen them in their own baptism, that they may share eternally with their children the salvation that you have given them through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Josephine Violet Newberg is the newest member of the family of God and the newest member of our family here at Emmanuel. Josephine, the Lord watch over your coming and going from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Congregation may be seated. We continue with the last two verses of the baptismal. <laughs>
turn to page 151, Divine Service Setting 1. As you are able, please stand. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment to examine our hearts and to reflect upon God's word. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord.
Isaiah, a prophet. And uh, we uh, hear now selected verses from chapters 5 and 3 and 4. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and shrewd in their own sight. Woe to those who are heroes at drinking wine and valiant men in mixing strong drink, who acquit the guilty for a bribe and deprive the innocent of his right. The Lord has taken his place to contend he stands to judge peoples. The Lord will enter into judgment with the elders and princes of his people. It is you who have devoured the vineyard. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. What do you mean by crushing my people? By grinding the face of the poor, declares the Lord of hosts. The Lord said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with outstretched necks, glancing wantonly with their eyes, mincing along as they go, tinkling with their feet. Therefore, the Lord will strike with a scab the heads of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will lay bare their secret parts. In that Day, the Lord will take away the finery of the anklets, the headbands, and the crescents, the pendants, the bracelets, and the scarves, the headdresses, the armlets, the sashes, the perfume boxes, and the amulets, the signet rings and nose rings, the festal robes, the mantles, the cloaks, and the handbags, the mirrors, the linen garments, the turbans, and the veils. Instead of perfume, there will be rottenness. Instead of a belt, a rope. Instead of well-set hair, baldness. Instead of a rich robe, a skirt of sackcloth. And branding instead of beauty. Your men shall fall by the sword. And your mighty men in battle. And her gates shall lament and mourn empty. She shall sit on the ground. And seven women shall take hold of one man in that day, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own clothes. Only let us be called by your name. Take away our reproach. In that day the branch of the Lord shall be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the land shall be the pride and honor of the survivors of Israel. And he who is left in Zion and remains in Jerusalem will be called holy, everyone who has been recorded for life in Jerusalem. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and cleanse the bloodstains of Jerusalem from its midst by a spirit of judgment and by a spirit of burning. Then the Lord will create over the whole site of Mount Zion and over her assemblies a cloud by day and smoke and shining of a flaming fire by night. For over all the glory there will be a canopy there will be a booth for shade by day from the heat, and for a refuge and a shelter from the storm and rain. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We invite Arlo to share a song with us at this time. <coughs> Do 
The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We invite the children forward at this time. here and have a seat. Good to have you here this morning. Yeah. At the beginning of our service this morning, we had something special, didn't we? It happened right there with that, that square thing. It's called a baptismal font. And what happened to baby Josephine? She was baptized. What do we put on her head? Some water? Yeah. And in that water was the word of God. And God claimed her to be his own. Put his mark upon her. Showed how much he loved her. Yeah. In, in a much different way, but at our house across the street, we have a, a dog. And I have a, a collar on the dog, and on that collar, I have a little name tag that says that she belongs to me. So in case she ever gets away and somebody would find her, they could look at that tag and they would say, hmm, that dog belongs to Pastor Lee. And hopefully they would call me or bring my dog back home, right? Do any of you have a dog that has like a little tag on it? Yeah, yeah, that's good. That way they know. Well, in baptism, God puts a tag on us, except you can't see it. But he claims us as his own. We made the sign of the cross upon Josephine's forehead and upon her heart, marking her as one redeemed and loved by God. And God can see that tag. He can see that mark that she is claimed as his own. And you... When you were baptized, God put that same mark on you, said, you are mine, so that he would always know us and always love us. And so sometimes we'll wear like a cross on a ring or a necklace or something like that as a sign of what's happened to us in baptism, that God loves us, that he has claimed us as his own. That's a good thing. We can never be lost because God is our God, and he knows where we are, and he always comes to be with us, to find us, and to love us. Let's join in a word of prayer. Can you fold your hands? Dear Jesus, we thank you for how much you love us, that you've claimed us to be yours in baptism, and that you watch over us always. Thank you, Jesus, for that great love. Help us always to live as your children. In your name we pray. Amen. I have some tags with me this morning, um, and I'm going to give one to each of you that you could have and, uh, and wear, and as a reminder that God loves you. And when you have that, then you can head back to your seat if you'd like. There you go. There you are. Thanks for coming up. Please rise for the Holy Gospel, the words of Jesus, as we join in singing the Alleluia verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke in the third chapter. expect 
expectation. And all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming. The strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations he preached good news to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, who had been reproved by him for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evil things that Herod had done, added this to them all, that he locked up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens were opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Our sermon hymn is 508. It speaks about the day of the Lord. Uh, note what it says about that day of the Lord, both for unbelievers and then for believers. Hymn 508.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We've spent the past year reading through the history books of the Old Testament, the history of God's people, from Adam all the way through the Exodus and all of the kings, and through the poetry, the writings. Now we come to the prophets, a totally different kind of book. Uh, the prophets were people who lived uh, during the time of the kings of Israel, and God would send them as, as preachers, proclaimers, people to speak his word to his people. And of all of them, Isaiah, that we start with, was the most prolific and is the most quoted uh, in the New Testament and used in our preaching as well. But Isaiah did not have an easy task. None of the prophets did. Because you see, God would raise them up when things were going wrong, when things were bad. Then he would raise up a prophet to speak God's word to his people, to point out their sin, to call them to repentance, and also to speak of, of the coming judgment and destruction that would happen if they did not repent. It was not a lot of fun to be an Old Testament prophet. But also at times, those Old Testament prophets got to speak some wonderful words. Words of mercy, words of gospel, words of forgiveness and promise. Sometimes those words were directed to the people speaking what would happen after they repented after God's judgment had been executed. And sometimes they were looking forward, speaking about the day of Jesus and what that would mean and bring for all people. In our text for today, twice we see the words, the phrase, in that day. And if you look at that phrase, in that day, and what it says about that day, you see that that the two times it's used, it has totally opposite pictures of what that day is and means. We'll look at those two pictures this morning. First of all, in that day is a day of judgment. The prophet is called to speak harsh words. Our text begins, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, bitter for sweet, sweet for bitter. Things are turned upside down. It's not just that way today. It was that way back then. People calling evil good. Bad things saying God accepts them. And the good things, people say, no, those are wrong. That's idolatry, to change what God has said, to reverse his commandments. And Isaiah says, and in addition to that, they acquit the guilty for a bribe. Bribes were taking place. The innocent were deprived of their rights. There's corruption that is rampant. And people are stealing from the poor taking what belongs to the poor because they can, because the poor have no power. Isaiah speaks harsh words about what the people are doing. And then he tells what God is going to do as a result and consequence of that. Verse 16 of chapter 3. The Lord said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, walk with outstretched necks, glance wantonly with their eyes, mincing along, tinkling with their feet, the Lord will strike with a scab their heads, lay bare their secret parts. In that day, the Lord will take away all their finery, 
What a long list it was in our text. All of these beauty things gone, stripped away. Isaiah is clear. The day of the Lord is coming. Instead of perfume, it's going to be rotten smell. Instead of well-set hair, baldness. Instead of a rich robe, sackcloth, the clothing of mourning. Branding instead of beauty. Branding is what they did to slaves. Instead of being a beautiful person, you would be branded a slave owned by others. And your men will fall by the sword, your mighty men in battle. Seven women will take hold of one man and say, we'll eat our own bread, wear our own clothes, only let us be called by your name. Take away our reproach. All the men would be killed in battle. There would be no husbands for the women. And they would say, let me just be a concubine. I'll provide for myself. You don't need to take care of me. Just give me an heir. So bad would things be. God's judgment that was coming. God can and will punish the guilty. God can and will set things right. In Isaiah's day, it was the Assyrian army that God raised up and used them to execute judgment. And yet when we read some of these words, we might say that Isaiah could be speaking and living today as well. For we see in our own society evil being called good and good being called evil. People proclaiming sin to be okay. People proclaiming the commandments to be wrong. For us to speak against sin means to be considered to be bigoted or prejudiced or judgmental or narrow-minded or unfair. Yes, things in our day are turned upside down as well. And so Isaiah's words are appropriate for us. God's words of judgment, God's call to repentance. You see, God's judgment does and will come. It's come to civilization after civilization, Old Testament and New Testament, country after country. God can and will and does set things right. When people fail to repent, when people forsake the Lord, when the level of evil rises in a land, God sends his day. John, in our gospel reading, spoke about Jesus. Verse 17, Jesus, his winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor, to gather the wheat, and to burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. This isn't just Isaiah in the Old Testament. This is Jesus himself. There's a judgment day. A day of reckoning. That day may come. God may send some kind of judgment upon our land. And whether or not that happens during our life, know this. That every one of us will indeed face a judgment day. A day of the Lord. The day of our death we stand before the Lord. And the day of Christ's return we stand again before the Lord. God holds us accountable. God is our judge. In that day applies to us. Just as much as it does the children of of Israel in that day. And yet, amazingly, chapter 4, verse 2, in that day, 
speaks of an entirely different scenario. It's not a different day, but it's like two sides of the same coin. The day of the Lord is judgment for unbelievers, for those who reject him, for those who reject his commandments and his teachings. It's a day of judgment. But the coming of the Lord is a good thing for believers. Because when God comes to set things right, the believers who have been oppressed by the wicked, they are set free. God brings his day, not just for punishment for evildoers, but for freedom and liberty and deliverance for his faithful people. In that day, verse 2, the branch of the Lord will be beautiful and glorious. The fruit of the land will be the pride and honor of the survivors of Israel. He who is left in Zion and remains in Jerusalem will be called holy. Everyone who has been recorded for life in Jerusalem. Yes, God knows his people. He records our names in his book of life. Josephine's name recorded this morning in God's book of life. Your name recorded on the day of your baptism. Your name written in his book of life. As long as you are a child of faith. It's a new day that God brings, a day of redemption, of cleansing, of making us holy. The branch of the Lord that is raised up and grows is Jesus. Isaiah foretold the day of the Lord that came to the children of Israel. They would be freed eventually from the king of Assyria. The remnant would be restored. Justice and faith would abound. But again, the people would sin and, and problems would arise. And so Isaiah speaks not just about that day when Assyria would be defeated, but he speaks about that day of Jesus, that righteous branch that comes once and for all. That's the day of the Lord, the coming of Jesus, his birth, his death, his resurrection. And the day of the Lord for you, my friends, it's the day of your baptism. It's the day of faith. That is your day of the Lord. And the day of Christ's return, the day of your death, the day of heaven, that too for you is the day of the Lord. The last verse of our text speaks about that cloud and fire and canopy, reminiscent of the Old Testament. The children of Israel coming out of Egypt and how God went with them through the wilderness. God again being present in such a visible way. A shelter, a canopy over us. In the book of Revelation we read how that is. How we sit in his presence. He shelters us. We are before his throne. No hunger or thirst or scorching heat or biting cold. All of that gone perfect life, the coming of the Lord, the day of the Lord. And when the day of the Lord has come to us in faith, in baptism, in his word, in the supper, then we look forward to the day of the Lord. We know it will shine upon us. It will set us free. We look forward to eternity with our Lord in his grace favor, and blessing. And that, my friends, is the way that it is on this first Sunday of Epiphany in the year of our Lord, 2016. In Jesus' name, amen. We respond now to our Lord and his word with our offerings. Uh, please also take this time. There's a, a red folder in your pew. If you would pass that to those next to you and, and sign that, we would appreciate that.
In our prayers this morning, uh, we include uh, the family of Marvin Schobeck, who is the brother of Don, who was called home uh, this past week. We pray for comfort uh, for the family of Marvin, along with the family of Phil Smith, um, also for uh, Jerry Wissel, um and family on the 10th anniversary of, of the death of his wife. And we give thanks to the Lord with our uh, former vicar, uh, Vicar uh, Jeff and his wife on the birth of a baby boy, Benjamin Charles, this past week. We rise for prayer. Almighty God, you are a God of justice, a God who punishes sin, but a God who loves sinners who gives the gift of baptism and forgiveness, who makes us holy. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would be at work in our land, that we would not be a people who call good evil and evil good, but rather that we would be a people who know and love your word and, and your law and what you say to be right and true. Give to us a love for your word, a love for the truth, a love for the gifts of faith that you have given to us. Lord, in your mercy. In our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for your comfort for the families of those who mourn. Especially that you would be with the family of Marvin, the family of Phil, the family of Janice. Surround them with your love. Keep them in your care. Remind them of your promises. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gifts that you give to us. We thank you for the gift of Benjamin Charles to Jeff and Rebecca. Bless these parents and this gift of new life. And we thank you, dear Lord, for Clyde and for the 81 years of life you have given to him. And Laurel and Julene and 60 years of marriage this week. Bless and keep them always. Lord, in your mercy, and Almighty God, we commend to you the many who are ill, those who suffer, those who are undergoing tests, those who face surgery, those who are recovering. We commend to your care, O Lord, Darlene, Pat, Chuck, Lois, Ione, Jim, Jerry, Heather, Charlotte, Thomas, Colleen, Lori, Shar, Julianne, Wayne, Gary, Sally, Brett, Bonnie, Greg, Eddie, Aiden, Charles, Jackie, Lori, and those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace.
our visitors today. Uh, those who are here for the baptism and those who are here with family, good to have you uh, worship with us today. Pray God's blessings on each of you. Everyone's invited downstairs. We have coffee and, and goodies uh, in the fellowship hall. I invite you to join us for that. Also, um, everyone is welcome. We have uh, Sunday school and Bible class uh, following that as well. There's our, we're going to update our directory, and that's by the elevator. You might check that if everything is good. Just put a red check by your name, and we'll know it's good. If you have a cell phone number, um, we'd appreciate having that. You might just write that in. Uh, we'd appreciate that also. Pastor Ben is back, and so his uh, classes will uh, resume this week. Pray the Lord uh, be with you and keep you all in his care. <laughs> 